All right. So today's SimCast, I'm going to stick with that. We're going to discuss uh, kind of the, the, the concept or the thought of hype versus excitement during the you know, during the process of releasing an MMO. I mean, it's going to go towards any game, but primarily we want to focus on the MMORPG genre because that's what Ashes of Creation is. Uh, so I actually want to, at least for today, I wanted to look at some of co- the comments that we got on uh, the, the YouTube video from last week. Uh, and there, there weren't a lot, but we actually had one from Anger. Anger Drop is someone in virtue as well. And I noticed that he had made a, he actually had mentioned we were talking about last week. And last week was the idea of community and forward momentum. Um, it was right after PAX. It was actually the last day of PAX when we did that video. Um, and uh, during that, that actual webcast, uh, we were looking at, we had some, we had some comments here from Zenthi. He was like, Hey, great conversation. Um, that he, he also agreed about, they were dropping the ball pretty hard with their stream schedule, uh, uh, getting those streams out when they said they were going to, um, and basically overall with their social media. So that it was nice to see that that resonated for other people. Um, got some good feedback as far as the podcast went. So I just wanted to give shout outs to them. Fiastos. Zenthi, Caitlin, I'm going to say give, it's actually GI for VE. Uh, appreciate the love you all. And Caitlin had mentioned, uh, you know, appreciate the constructive criticism. I'm glad that that message was received that way. And, uh, that she, she did make a mention about how, uh, I had said something about, you know, that it was easy for people to think that potentially that the keys could have been rigged. And I just wanted to reiterate, I absolutely don't think that, um, and I do appreciate the, the input and feedback because I wanted to ensure that people didn't think that was the case. I was just, you know, discussing some of the thoughts that some people had mentioned in the community that I had kind of, uh, you know, seen or heard from others. Um, back to Anger, though. He had mentioned uh, awesome video guys. Uh, he basically was talking about the cash shop, saying he understood the why there may have been pricing that was high on the packages, uh, mainly wanting to limit uh, the amount of people that had access early on um and i think maybe rebel you had actually had said something similar to that i did right so um you know it's really good to kind of see there's the similar pro- thought process not only among our own community here in virtue but also in just just kind of the community of ashes of creation as a whole it was good to see that resonated with people and uh and that it was received as constructive criticism because it was important that i, that I really wanted to ensure that that was the case for for them um but he had also mentioned something about that the cash shop and the the early access shop, the ashes shop being something uh, like many of us has turned him off to a lot of MMOs. And uh, and I'm actually going to get back to how he ended that there. I also realized I didn't really mention who our who our other person is. It may not have been the most familiar face since Keith hadn't been on here before. O'Keefe down there in the bottom left, as you'll see. Um, with that that very very sexy man beard there, I do believe it's in a shade of red. <laughs> um, as you can see, Revel here is a, here again down the bottom right. He is he is very. Uh, I'm going to say that he is very very glow in the dark this evening. Um, but I appreciate that. You know, needs always need someone to light the way in dark times. So he'll be our 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 beacon of <laughs> light and hope. Moving forward, this discussion by the light. Um, (laughs) So anyway, so let's get let's get to the uh, the conversation. So the idea and the prospect of hype versus excitement. This is a video. This is actually been I've wanted to discuss for a while. And a a lot of the thoughts I've had about making videos for YouTube. This is something general or relatively new to me, which I know a lot of people that, you know, pay attention to my content actually know that. Uh, But with that being said, uh, you know, this is something that I've had on, on my agenda or list for a while, probably for like since the end of last year. And there's a few other ones. And I felt that this is definitely the forum or venue, in my opinion, that I'm probably going to be able to, um, to communicate my thoughts on it. And I thought, why not have others? So, uh, I really appreciate the comments on that last week's video. Uh, But I I do definitely want to talk about the hype versus uh, excitement uh, prospect. So here's my thoughts about hype and excitement. So during the process of of releasing an MMO, 
I, I notice there's, I'm not going to say it's two polarized sides. And this is just my, my train of thought for you too. Um, especially when I get your feedback, I just, you know, want you to kind of have some of my own thoughts in mind. Uh, but at least to me during, during a release, there's not polarized, but there's definitely two sort of sides that I notice, uh, in the community as it evolves. And there's a side that I know I mentioned last week, the, the hype train, the, the side that is jumping on, you know, as many people say the bandwagon, but, but the hype following the hype train of this is the next thing people are talking about a bunch. It's the new thing. And you see a lot of gamers that, that will rotate through the next big thing. And then they're just like let down or they don't like it, or it's not what they had thought. And that, that is going to be something that, that I'm going to be touching on in next week's video, but I'm not going to dig too much into that. I just want to talk about these two prospects, the, the hype, the excitement to me, excitement revolves more around community. It's just that to me, it's the, for me personally, it's, it's that part of me that, or even others where, man, we are just really, just really looking forward to the prospect of not something new, but the potential something has, right? The potential of what it can be. And I think that there's, aside to that, to those individuals who, who also are, are basically looking forward to or excited about something, you said, tend to see those individuals as being the patient ones, the ones that are building community, the ones that are really investing in the ways I feel like is pure to the soul of the MMORPG genre. And I feel it's important to mention that that's my thought as to that, that side. Now there's the hype. You always see the hype as being, it's the numbers, it's the explosion of numbers, it's the, uh, unfortunately, it's even some toxicity, a lot of toxicity. You'll see this, and I'm not naming anybody, but you see this in any MMO. I'm not pointing anybody out. I'm not naming anybody, because quite frankly, I don't care. That's not my problem. That's not my issue or concern. But it is definitely a part of the process of an MMO building and gaining that forward momentum we talked about. You have the individuals where you have the guilds that are just blowing it up with the numbers and you see them just like growing like crazy, bringing in tons of people. I feel like that mirrors hype. That mirrors that hype factor I talk about. Whereas the excitement factor tends to be you may be in low, smaller communities, people willing to be patient, people that are, you know, and you see this on both sides in the Ashes of Creation community right now. And again, whichever side you may be on or whichever polarized area that maybe you lean towards, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I am just want to discuss the potential issues that you can have uh, during the launching of an MMO and, and how these factors can play into that. Um, so I've kind of mentioned some of my thoughts about what, what I see is kind of being in the, the area of the hype and the area of excitement. Um, and with that being said, um, those are being my thoughts. What are some of your thoughts as uh, MMO launches and you, you, what are some of the things you feel like maybe resonate in those two areas that you see? Uh, we'll go ahead and go in circle clockwise this time with Revel then, then Keith. But yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of really agree with, 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 uh, basically your point. I, I would like to kind of rename it, uh, you know, hype versus excitement to, sure. well, especially when it comes to community, I would like to, uh, kind of rename it, uh, less loud and too proud. Okay. Uh, I, the thing about, the thing about that is, is when it comes to communities, just in general, like maybe guilds or something, um, it, it seems like you're, you're excited uh, MMO player of a, a new game coming out is going to be a, a lot more, more quiet, more distinguished, more patient, like you uh, had pointed out, about um, uh, kind of getting um, connections as far as um, any, any other type of members for the community. And they're going to be very wary of the people that they uh, connect with. And that's an important thing. Um, to make sure that you're with the right people. Um, and the, 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 the ones that are going to be too proud 
are going to be the ones that are kind of all, all clustered up and following, uh, as you say, the hype. Um, it's, they're, they're all going to be the ones to join the, uh, either a guild or a, or a community. It doesn't really have to be a guild. It could be a separate Discord. Um, they're going to join that hype because it's, you know, kind of like any, any game. It's the, the next big thing, and it's where everybody is. And uh, to be to be honest, a lot of people just like a piece of the pie, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, it's just uh, at the end of the day, you have to ask, is it really better for you to go towards the hype, or is it better for you as a, you know, not just a player, but a person to kind of reserve yourself and – um, get with people who have the like-minded goals that you do in an in a, in a MMO. For me, I feel like the hype is part of the excitement. I, I think I think any game is going to draw in a lot of players. People are going to want to be part of the new best thing, the new fun thing. And as long as there's a bunch of hype behind it, you're going to pull in a lot of players. And unfortunately, that's going to bring in a lot of toxicity. But that's that's really any game, and as long as it doesn't pour into the player base too much, and people don't give into it, I think it's perfectly fine. As long as that you put a little level on the toxicity, you're good. That, like I said, for me, the hype is part of the excitement. I'm I'm excited about a game, and that's because of all the hype. Like, I feel like if Ashes didn't have any hype behind it, I might not have known about it, and. That's pretty much that. As long as you get part of a, a good community yourself, you can kind of not worry about all that. You can distance yourself from all the uh, toxicity, all the people who are just jumping on the bandwagon, and distance yourself, and that's it. It's good enough. <laughs> I agree with you both, actually. And there's a reason I framed it that way, too, is because, like Keith said, you're absolutely right. You're going to have the hype does bring a certain it does have its benefits because in the beginning if you don't have and this is this is where we're going to talk about you know potentially the content creator program that they have which i'm part of um and i have i have my own i do have some definite criticisms about it um but i also see some really positive elements to it at this time um and i may or may not decide to share that i'm not really too sure um, none of them are really negative, but uh, it's just thoughts. Um, and it does play into the factor of the hype. Because to me, some of the positives you get, and I you know, can frame it as there being a polarized, you know, uh, the, the thought process about the two elements being polarized. But the truth is, is that they do overlap and that it does, it, it does exist on a spectrum where they do overlap and you do have both. And like, you, like Keith said, you have toxicity, and that's where, where it comes to if you don't want to have part of that. Um, it, it, if you don't want to have to could be concerned about experiencing that at least in abundance or in <clears throat> what would be considered, I suppose, a, a trend of your experience, then it is important that, much like Revel said, you're ensuring that you're choosing communities that mirror your own values, that are mirroring your own interests and, and what it is that's important to you, whatever that may be. Um, toxicity, unfortunately, is a very, it, it is definitely a plague of, quite frankly, just the internet in general these days. And I feel like it definitely <clears throat> represents the, the broader picture of just as a society, even globally, some of the problems that we face. Uh, and so that's a much bigger topic, but you do see that translate itself or um, sort of, uh, I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for here, but it does make its way into uh, video games as well, clearly. Uh, and and it does it is something that has a problem. But, you know, there was a, and I'm not going to name it, <clears throat> it was about another MMO. It had recently been something that was shared with me last week. And part of the point that was made by the individual uh, about the publisher of the game was that the publisher wasn't doing a good job of monitoring and addressing 
toxicity in chat or in community, um, the community as a whole. So definitely when it comes to that, there's something that, that does, you know, is dependent on the, the GM, so to speak, to ensure that they're really monitoring their own expectations of a community and enforcing it when it's, when it's a problem, regardless of whether that means that they're banning an account or potentially, you know, could impact their own revenue. I feel like that definitely is important. Um, but to not stray away, uh, we were talking about hype and excitement and some of the things I feel like could really benefit both of those uh, two different trends would be, uh, you know, the content creator program. It's something they've mentioned. It's something that's been brought up. Um, and it's not something we've really gotten to see yet. I know that they announced that it's going to be quarter four of this year that Alpha One will take place. And that means basically anybody that has purchased a package such as Kickstarter, summer packages, any of that stuff that's currently in the cash shop now, where you purchase a package and it says you get Alpha One key, that's when those people get to get to start to play. And so you see some people, including me last year, it was like, what the hell? Like, why is it that there's like an Alpha Zero? And I feel like it's very important that I, I make it clear for everybody to understand that pre-Alpha or Alpha Zero, this is not a, a, a stage of the game that people typically get to see. A lot of people that are being able to participate in Alpha Zero are very fortunate because a they're getting to get to see it at such an early stage they are literally getting to see it from the literal foundation being built up and that is the the process and where they they are really addressing making sure that their stuff isn't broken so that they can open it up and people can begin to experience something it's not even a a process that typically we get to see usually by the time you see a game developer share something it's way past that and it's in between that phase and and alpha. So I feel like it's important that anybody that's watching this that has a package and they're not in alpha zero, you can totally get into alpha zero. I mean, last October, they made it so easy. They were like, hey, you're going to have an opportunity to like make a jackal lantern and do, do some art. Hey, I dropped the ball. I didn't do it. Okay, that's not how I got my key, but my alpha zero key. But they're, they, they have been very generous about it, although... I feel like it's not always organized as, be, as good as it could be, but they have, but we talked about that and, uh, they, but they, they have made it very easy. If you are engaged in the community and you are actively paying attention to what you can do to get a key, I truly do believe that you, you can get your hands on a key. There are people that are super active that, you know, really follow everything. And there are a lot of the people that are in alpha zero, but I'm excited that they opened up alpha zero to a lot of people at PAX now like they had mentioned. And I know both of you, they released the video on April 12th <clears throat> that I had mentioned earlier. And they, man, I, I don't want to talk too much about that. I've talked a lot about this other stuff. What are, what are some of your thoughts about the video? I was, I was pretty impressed with that. I thought it was well done. I think it, I think it was well done. And um, <clears throat> I think what stuck out to me the most, and uh, I'm pretty sure that they've said it in past videos, but for some reason I just kind of caught it uh, during this last video, was um, what one of the developers were saying was, uh, you know, one of the main goals of the game is it going to be to log in and, and do daily quests. It's going to be log in, log to, to log in and see the world change uh, as, as you were offline. And, um, you know, I don't know if, if, if I may have missed it in the past, but that's something that uh, that really excited. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not even going to say hi. Like, that really excited. Um, so that's just one of the things that stuck out to me as far as the video. And it was very well put together. Um, and I, I think that I, I really liked seeing, which is something that we didn't get to see, in the uh, the pack streams was mm -hmm. the fact that they interviewed the other people yep. um the people who, who played the game which is something that we mentioned in the last uh we did the last mm -hmm. podcast that uh, we did was we didn't get to see that um during the packs and uh, i think it's you know okay you you guys did really good at uh, at making sure that that was something that you did bring um even though it was a little bit later um that we got to saw sorry, <laughs> that we got to see um and 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 kind of 
get the, the, the average player's reaction or a newcomer to the game's reaction. That was really good that they added that in the video. And it's something that was very well placed because that's something that we as part of the community want to see. I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree with all that. I, I Other MMOs and stuff, I hate where it ends up becoming you... you all right, let me log in just to uh, get this daily quest done and log out. Like, I'm, I log in for a few minutes. And mm-hmm. I, I hated parts of that. But the part that stuck with me was when the guy said uh, about moving the genre forward and not chasing what's already been done or following other MMOs that have been out. They want to change. They want to do something. They want to move forward. That's what really stuck with me. It's I played plenty of MMOs, and essentially they're all the same. They're all chasing behind the last one that did it. And it's like, oh, let's just follow this money train, essentially. And that's why I don't really play MMOs anymore. Mm. It's just, I, I don't want to play the same thing. I play that already. Yeah. Just different graphics. This this is exciting me, though. It is. It, it's just, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the things I think, I, if I ever get the opportunity to get Stephen Sharif <clears throat> on the show, just in case you were curious mm-hmm. if I'd like you to join in on this. I totally would. But uh, no pressure or anything. You're a busy guy. I totally understand. But uh, <laughs> but just saying, man, I've got so many questions. None that I think would actually, you know, put him in a position to share too much. Not that he's got a problem with that. He's It's great when the guy at the top of the company is the one that leaks the information more than <laughs> anybody else i love it man i'm just like oh i love it's good you can see that he's excited it's it's like you see the mmo gamer excited about this thing and you're just like oh my god this is great like that is one of the things i love about it but that's one of the things that gets me really excited is is that and the the whole node concept which i've talked about before like it's the idea of a of a alternate reality, you know. I know he's a huge Star Trek fan. For the trackies out there, get at me, boo. Just saying, Star Trek's awesome. Love it. Freaking Star Wars is good too. Love Star Wars, but tr- Star Trek I love more than anything. Probably. I don't care. Don't judge me. We all got our stuff and things. But uh, my my point is, is back to the excitement and hype. There's a lot of things like that that really excite me. That really, you know, get me hyped up. Things that can can really aid the game. Uh, for me. Uh, and I would, I'm definitely interested in some of your guys' thoughts on this too, which is, you know, what are some things during this process of forward momentum while the game is experiencing a hype, you know, hype sensation, a hype factor, which is absolutely going to come. There is not a huge hype factor right now. The hype factor is it's blowing up like Fortnite. You guys see that shit all over the place right now. Like, and then I'm sitting here going, man, shit. I remember them days when I was playing Fortnite and then nobody played to stream it. Yeah, like I was, I remember there's like 200, 300 people streaming that game, and I was like, oh, it's cool, but no one's gonna watch it. Now it's like freaking, I remember 800,000 at some point. I was like, damn, like (laughs) just damn, right? So there's a lot to having big streamers play the game, showcase the game that will absolutely lead to hype, that will create a huge burst in attention on the game that can happen very easily through the content creator program. However, and this is me on the content creator program. I feel like they are doing a pretty good job in who they're choosing. I don't really want to say why I think that, uh, I think it's important. And this is where I've seen some other MMOs make mistakes in their content creator program. Sure. I think it's important that you have some baseline as to who you're bringing in. I also think it's, some, you know, you want to see that they're going to be able to captivate the audience. I feel like more than what their viewer base is right now, I feel like it's more important that you're able to identify the person and, and their attitude and the way they present things and, and that they're able to captivate an audience. And you're going to have people that can do that that are smaller. And I feel like those individuals are probably going to be the ones you're going to see. And I'm probably going to put myself out there and say that I'll probably be one of those people. I'll be your theory crafter guy. I'll be making those builds. I'll be helping people understand how the game works because I'm big into like that element of community about it. Not saying that all content creators are like that, but then you got the ones that are like, they may not do that stuff, but they'll showcase it. And they got that audience to showcase it and they'll probably play it really well, right? They may not play it consistently over time, but they, and they may, 
and but it might be in the rotation. <clears throat> so you got the benefit of the smaller streamers and the bigger streamers. The smaller ones are probably going to grow. The bigger ones will probably come and go. I just rhymed that. That was cool. You're a poet. You didn't know. I, I know. You too, dude. You too. Keith? No? I got, I got nothing. Uh, that's cool, man. <laughs> hey, it's not for everybody, man. It's cool. He but... stole a poem and didn't know it from me. Right? <laughs> I did. That's hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, he plus for effort, Keith. But that beard, though, man. I mean, really, that's what's... I mean, I don't even... Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about. So my thoughts are content creator program absolutely can help. I feel like it would be very beneficial, and this is just my standing. I think it would be very beneficial for 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 the team to you know go out and say you know almost publicly like hey this is our this is our group man these are the people to look forward to seeing some really cool things from because in those periods where maybe they aren't able to put stuff out they're hard at work they're a smaller studio they're busting their butts to get this game to where it needs to be and they've been doing great you guys rock they've been doing great and we've all gotten to see that and if we aren't able to see that as often, it's important to be like, hey, check out these places, right? Let's let's go and put, you know, like go through and say, hey, these are the people. Like, check these guys out. You know, so people know who to go to and look to for content when they're maybe feeling starved for it. Um, I'm really hoping the NDA gets lifted soon. And I think Amen. it would... Yeah, and I think it would be important that they ensure that the content creators definitely have some level of exclusivity to that um, so that they can ensure that it's presented in a really good way um, and that, that people, you know, again, know where to go in the community to see that. It's not like you're just checking out which streams are up. You really want to ensure that those people are people you're proud of and that are people that are doing a good job promoting you and and really investing. And I think it's important to invest in those that are investing in you, um, just like you do with the community. Um, but with that being said, that's really kind of my thing. I feel like that is probably the most, one of the most important elements because a lot of game developers will go out during their content creator programs, or I'm not going to say it. I've talked about it before a certain battle Royale game. <clears throat> I'm not going to say anything about it, but in the beginning when it was getting ready to launch was really great at saying, Hey, promote us, do this and that. And a lot of people that really didn't have a stake were just all about promoting that game, man. I watched these people smaller or not just invested constantly, like just in the community invested. And then when the, when the game launches, if their numbers aren't up to par, they just toss them to the wayside and go for the big like numbers. I'm like, ooh, that is horrible to me. Like to me, that's it's horrible. So if you're about community, I feel like that's something very important to keep in mind. Really value the people that are invested, because those are the individuals and those are the communities that have whatever the numbers are, in the long run, are going to be your your solid foundation, where things maintain and sustain themselves, no matter what the DLC or the expansion brings as far as numbers go. Um, <clears throat> so what are some things that you two feel during this forward momentum in regard to things you can be excited or uh, hyped about that you feel like is important uh, or maybe for you is important for you to see during this process and this forward momentum before release? And it is a long time until that. So I think me personally as a, as a member of the community um, and someone who is very excited about this game i think the the biggest thing that that i could probably probably add to what you just said is uh, be careful for the content droughts um the the, the drought of content where the, that lasts longer than probably three weeks <clears throat> you're probably going to get less attention if you know you have you you only show a live stream or you're only interacting with the community um on a you know monthly month and a half basis if you let it go that long you're gonna have you know people are like goldfish uh, unfortunately that's just how they are <laughs> so 
you know, you, you got to keep their attention. And I think, you know, putting out some kind of content every three weeks is acceptable or at least giving a content creator the go ahead to do some type of content for you or somebody in your studio to produce something that uh, uh, that gives us as, as, as a community something to um, something to reflect on but also be excited for and look forward to. So that three weeks period, we can reflect on what we just talked, what we just saw, what we talked about. That's what these, what these podcasts are about. Um, your YouTube audience or your streaming audience, your content creators, they can help keep the community alive for at least three weeks. But when we run out of stuff to talk about, <laughs> there's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with both you guys uh, just going to go back to something Sim said earlier this is an alpha phase so I don't think anybody other than the actual creators of the game should be streaming anything as of yet because I'm sure there are a lot of things broken in the game right now because it's it's an alpha phase it's, it's not a complete game there's tons of stuff that's just not going to work the way they expected it to and that's the point of an alpha phase to get those bugs worked out mm -hmm. so i don't think anybody should be streaming it because you don't want people seeing that and thinking oh this is some crappy broken game not realizing that it's an alpha phase mm -hmm. so i think maybe just the the developers of the game should stream anything right now <laughs> but i definitely do agree with rebel that there should be some sort of content streaming well not streaming flowing mm -hmm every so often even if they do give the content creators the ability selected content creators make sure certain people who are reliable can put something nice out there because listen they have a lot on their hands and you guys the content creators they're gonna put a lot of effort into it because they they're ecstatic about this game and they want to push it they want it to be popular so i think that's that's what they should be doing they should give the content creators some leeway there. Maybe have them submit it so they can just oversee. But yeah, I think that's that would be the best thing to do. It's a great idea, actually. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've had you all like going. Is there anything you can talk about? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like locked down like Fort Knox. <laughs> yeah. you guys hate it, man. You're like it's like I, I can't I can't say anything. Sorry, guys. It's like, <sighs> yeah, like. It, yeah, I just can't. It's unfortunate. Sims I, like, let me link you this PAX video that was three <laughs> weeks old. So we've all no, seen. but this was the last thing I think that this was the last thing I could find that I could share here. Or check yeah, this out. Here you go, bro. <laughs> check you guys, out this. Have you guys seen this video yeah. yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we check out this. Check out this wiki link, man. There's some cool stuff there. Hey, man, I'm trying. Like, it's the best I can do right now. I'm sorry. Um, well, we understand. We understand. Yeah, but I agree with what Keith said too. Like you know, it, even though I would like to see, you know, like I said, these are things I feel like are important for the you know content creator team and for for Ashes to be doing and everything. Yeah, uh, you know that I'm I'm I am I'm gonna say that I'm glad that uh, I, I feel like in between what Keith and I had said too about the, you know, feel like uh, content creators you know should be, you know, it should be some exclusivity to it. Um, but you know what I am what I do like is the fact that uh, they what was it like I don't remember the date man I couldn't tell you but it was when they did the Dunier I hope I said that right feel free to correct me Stephen Sam um, but I'm pretty sure it's Dunier Dungeon that they had uh, they had dropped that and they showed like you know they there was that one live stream where they actually went in there together and I was like hell yeah dude that was awesome I mean I. Honestly, was a little sad that it didn't go on any longer, but I did lose my shit and laugh pretty hard watching that. Uh, I would love to see more stuff like that because I feel like that's a lot of what Keith was saying. It's also what a lot of what Revel was saying. Like this is this is that what you can do to uh, to show people stuff on a somewhat regular basis. But what what made me lose my shit? Like I remember watching watching that live stream, and I remember they went in there and they were doing their thing, and then. Uh, they kind of transitioned out and went into like, they started fighting each other. Right. And I know this was like well over probably almost two months ago or something. And I lost my shit because 
man, they love to go after Steven on his character. They just love to like hand it to him, man. They're just like, kill him, kill the warlord, right? They just go after him. And so it cracked me up because I was watching him and uh, he was like running with his back turned to them. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't turn your back to somebody attacking you. That's why I was like sitting there watching that. I was like, oh, he's so screwed. He's dead. He's going to die any second. Oh, there he goes. Pop. Anyway, crack me up. I feel like that is the stuff right there. You get one thing like that a month. I mean, I was just laughing so hard. It was joy, pure joy, pure joy. Call it excitement, call it hype, whatever you want. It's all about the joy to me. If you find the joy in something, if you can keep the joy in it, that's the soul of the MMORPG, especially in the beginning as it's like growing and we're getting towards those points of releasing things or content creators being able to share things or being able to have people that are disclosing things. It's those moments of joy. And I think that it's important that, yeah, definitely that those things are uh, occurring and taking place. And, um, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. Like I had my criticisms in the last video, but man, when I got to see that it was like the 12th of April when they released that video, I was like, man, well done. That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. You got to see how much fun it can be. That's it. Yeah. Got to see you can have fun. Enjoy the game. Yeah, man. Joke around. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so basically, you know, I had some thoughts about, about that. We kind of share our thoughts about that. Uh, what are some things like basically during this transitional period where, where they're all in pre alpha and no one could talk about anything. They're sharing what they can. Alpha one's, going to be in quarter four this year that's what like was that how many months is that like six months or something maybe less something like that roughly so you got till quarter four until alpha one right so you know there's pre-alpha testing and stuff Uh, i'm sure at some point they probably are going to have the content creator sharing stuff or just having people share it at in some at least in some interval i would think uh, I do think it's important that it's like submitted and definitely, I don't know about the streaming part either. I kind of agree with, with Keith on that. Um, I'm not sure if I would agree in like letting it be streamed just because of not knowing how the quality is going to be. I think it's important to ensure that you're really showing that polished version of what it is and what it's, you know, consistently able to be in this capacity, in this area, in this snapshot of this element of the game. And so, yeah, definitely, I think submitting it and that being approved, you know, and then and then kind of going from there as they transition to, to Alpha One and everything. But um, so what are you looking forward most to seeing between now? And I'm just going to say I'm not even going to go between now and release. I'm going to say between now and Alpha One, because I feel like pretty confident with the transparency that they've got that they'll probably have people either streaming or at least releasing content that is exclusive and is, is probably under their approval between now and then. I'm not going to say it will be. I don't know. I really don't. But I think Alpha 1, maybe you'll start to see people streaming it regularly, probably outside of even content creators, possibly. So let's say, hypothetically, that's the thing. Hypothetically, that's when we start to see maybe more active sharing of what's currently in alpha. Between now and then, what are some things you would like to see more of or maybe even want to see the most that maybe you're not getting or waiting for? I actually have two things. Cool. The first thing I want to see is the in-game detail of the items that are in the cash shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's. I think it's very important for us to see. I mean, since the content somewhat already released, as far as like the little miniature pictures they have. If if it's not just an idea, if they have something, um, we would like to see the models between now and then. That that maybe we purchased. If people have already purchased a pack, it would be good to see the in-game models now. Um, or if they release the actual uh, in-game model details of what things look like already, if they already have an idea, that would be better than little small pictures. Um, 
the second thing is I would like to see if you don't have any content that you want streamed, give us content that we already know about. So they said that they're going to go in more detail with the node system coming out soon. Um, that also, you can go a, a, a little bit deeper into the spec system that you're going to be having. Into the, uh, we know nothing about the religious system. There's so many things that they could, um, that we know about, that they can at least explain, um, aside from just forum post. If somebody were even were to take that forum post and create a video, um, ex uh, going into just a little more detail or um, people want knowledge of the game that's pretty much what I'm saying um, and people want you know proof in the pudding so so to speak yeah again I, I agree with all that just pretty much go into more detail about the systems that's basically like <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> so <laughs> this is completely speculation. This is something that I've had in my in my mind, and I feel like I've been wanting to like share this with pretty much anybody, and I just haven't really done it yet. But um, I know that they've been hiring positions, and I noticed when they were publicly saying something about we're looking for people and everything, I, I also tied that in to... What I, I looked on their site, right? Which is this is public. You can go on there in the Intrepid website. This is public. So, but I don't know if anybody's mentioned this or not yet. But I did notice something. Is on their website, they actually mention the Ashes of Creation universe and multiple games potentially. I don't know if anybody's aware of that, but they mentioned that. And then, I've seen it. yeah, and then Steven said, I, I think it <laughs> PAX, yeah, the, Steven said at PAX uh, that they were really being careful about the lore because of not wanting too much of that to get out at this point in time. And I'm kind of wondering if it's because of that, impl the implications of how that plays into those elements that aren't really being worked on yet. So I can kind of get it. Um, and and aside from that, like, that's just a thought, just a random thought. The other one was that you had mentioned the Node video and, and some content about that, right? Maybe the, more of the dungeon or the, any of that stuff, which is, would be cool too. Uh, but also, during PAX, I, maybe it was during the panel. I think it might have been during the panel. I think someone had a question during the panel about the Nodes and stuff, and I think that he said that someone during PAX back in Intrepid was actually working on a video for Nodes, Nodes 3, the third part of the Node yeah. system. I'm freaking excited to see that. Can we get that? Like, no, please. Just just saying. It would be great. I would freaking love to see that because I think Steven has got that alternate reality thing going on. I didn't see it said anywhere else, not claiming that it happened here, but I, there's this, like, history of, of I always feel like I say something and then I see it out there like kind of pop up and I'm just like oh, did he did they hear me or kind of like mm, called it I don't know I just want to know man I just want to know more about the nodes uh, he talked about the nodes though and and then the Q&A that 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 was shared I think it was the last or second to last apex that I think rebel had shared with me and ice cream had shared with me which was uh, him, they went through that day and they really talked about uh, talking about some of the mounts and things like that. And that was great. It was really good to, to hear that. I can also understand that they don't want to share too much right now, but I definitely want to see some more things like that as well. Um, so in the process we talked about, things you were looking for, I would say between the three of us here, we've all got a pretty pretty good background in MMOs. And I would say we've all had our problems with MMOs and getting into, you know, looking at them and being excited about them and then just really being let down somewhere along the way, whether it's because of some pay to win shit or because of some like just scammy behavior and no transparency or crapping on your player base, not caring, exploiting, using them, any of that stuff. What would be the thing for you that would really turn you off the most if or even things even 
what would be the things it's like, don't do this. Cause I know hey, and I'm not saying they don't know this. They clearly, I feel like they got a hell of a, hell of an understanding from an MMO gamer as to what not to do, like no pay to win, none of that stuff. But, but just in case, it's not something that's resonating. What would the things or thing be that you're just like, I don't do this because you'll lose me, man. You'll lose me. My biggest thing is if you cater to people who are going to leave you anyway. Um, because I'm the type of player that if I find a game that, uh, I mean, even now, you know, I still purchase expansions from WoW or just to see if they might change. Um, you know, we all want to make sure that we're investing in a game that made us feel uh, that joy that you were talking about so long ago and keep that joy. Um, the biggest problem with WoW is the cater to the casuals. So if you're going to cater to the casuals in Ashes of Creation, you're going to turn me off. That's pretty much it. Plain and simple. Very simple. Yeah, for me, it's straight up pay to win. If any of that ever gets into the game, I'm out. <laughs> right. And and yeah, listen to your player base. If there's something wrong or not working with the game that needs to be changed, listen to your entire player base. Don't listen to the 10 people with the loudest voices. Listen to the 2,000 behind them with the lower voices saying, no, this works. Don't change anything. Right. I'm, I'm so sick of games that it's like, Oh, wait, this one guy who's like influential says this needs to be changed. Let's change this right away. Mm -hmm. And then like everybody else is like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. we love that part of the game. What are you doing? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I just I hate that. It's just mm -hmm. that would that's the other thing that would just make me. Yeah. I'm out, guys. Later. Yeah, I would say probably for me, it's definitely being exploitive in nature. Uh, I would say for me. It's uh, one of my biggest problems is if pay to win. I mean, you could take pay to win and quite frankly, I feel like there are levels to pay to win, right? I, I wholeheartedly believe that they are so against pay to win that it won't happen. I believe that. But I'm going to, I do, I do. I do not think that there's ever going to, I mean, I, I genuinely, if I had to throw money on it, I would, well, wait, did that, kickstarted it. If I had to throw money on it, if I had to throw more money on it and say, do I think that it's possible that they'll do that? I genuinely do not see that happening. I think that they are so no to that. There's mm -mm, This is like something we are so tired of seeing that it's just not going to happen. I feel like it's out of the realm of possibilities. So that's my big thing. On uh, I'm really glad to see that. However... I want to just I want to take a sidestep on that and I want to think in the in the in I want to take it and think from the mindset of someone of what winning means to them, right? So if 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 for someone winning is having all the mounts, having all of the emotes or the pets, if it's to be able to collect a lot of that, I'm not saying right now and I'm not saying even in the future, don't have that stuff in your cash shop. I get it. That's cool. Like, I will buy stuff I really like. I'm saying if it's a loot crate situation, uh, no. Hell no. Don't make an RNG chance of whether you put it up there straight up. You can buy it for this much. Cool. And also, if you're going to have a cash shop and you're going to put items up that incentivize people to buy it, I firmly believe if someone really wants it bad enough, they'll pay the price for it. Don't mark it up to a crazy number. Make it make it something that, and again, I know they've, I've heard them say that they're going to really try to ensure that, you know, when the game is live, that those items are things that, that you are, it's going to be a, it's going to be fiscally sound, I suppose you could say. But also... Don't let those stuff and things that people want to achieve, such as mounts or pets or outfits or cosmetics, don't let that so heavily be in the cash shop. Try to balance it so at least 
you can get, and I know I've heard them say this is probably a possibility. I think it was in the video Q and a or the last video from April 12th. Don't quote me, but I do believe that, that it was said like, you know, there will be, you know, a way to get certain things in game as well as in the cash shop. So even if it's a variation, one of the things that really drives me nuts is when, when the, when a game is exploitive of the base because of the nostalgia bait, we release it and we lock stuff behind a paywall and, and one person's winning, right? Might be things. So make it achievable in game, whether it's the rating drops, incentivize people to continue to go in consistently to go and look for these things, make it hard to get them. And I know that they've already talked about this being the case, but my thing is stay true to that because I will continue to come and get in that game regularly. A, because one thing you said, freaking fantastic daily suck. Oh, I, I love it. I want to get in and check out what's changed in the world. I want to check that out. You all are on the track with that. I, I salute you. I do salute you, right? I do. I've, I freaking love it, man. That is like one of the biggest things that has drove me nuts. You feel like you've got to get in and you're getting in every week and you're playing hours every day. This is what's so wrong with the old MMO. Sim just went on a soapbox. This is what's wrong with the old MMO is people will get on and they will play hours a day, tens of hours a week just to break even. You don't want to feel like it's a job, man. But at the same time, if people want that level of prestige, don't cater to the casuals. Really make it so if they want it, they do got to invest. They got to work for it. And there won't be very many people that get to have it. I think it's great. I'm definitely, I'm an old school gamer, I guess. I hate cash shops in all sense of the word. You want to put money into the game? I get it. But I, I, I hate cash shops. Make everything attainable in game and people will play the game to get it. Right. Like you were saying, make it hard to get. Yeah. Don't make it easy. Make it like a really rare loot drop or like end game boss type loot drops where there's a point zero one in a million chance to actually get it. Don't make it a loot cash game because listen. Some people make a lot of money. Some people have a lot of money just throw away the game. Exactly. And like you were saying, for some people, winning that game is getting all the loot, getting the stuff they want, getting all the items and the skins or whatever. I'm old school with those games. I like the games where you bought the game, you paid a monthly fee to play the game, yeah. and that was it. You maybe wanted more accounts, so you bought six accounts to play that game and paying six monthly fees. That brought in money. I mean, you don't need a cash shop to have cosmetic things because th those things turn me off to games. I mean, mm -hmm. as if it's just cosmetics, I'll still play the game because for me, I don't really care about cosmetics. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I feel like everything or almost everything should be attainable in game for any player to get without pouring more money into it. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like, it, like you said, the, to some people, their end game is the pets and all that stuff. They get on, they play just for that reason. Yeah, definitely make sure that the, the majority of that is in the game and not in the cash shop. I completely agree. And, you know, yes, uh, uh, completely different. And you know what? This is a great way to end right here. We went longer than I expected. Ah, shit. I said, said 30 to an hour every week. Hell, if I've met the mark right there, went over. But um, got a good reception to it last time. Uh, here's here's my thing. I think the next next thing I want to talk about is the perfect transition from this mark this mark. And so hopefully both of you are able to be here next week. If you're not, oh, sad face, whatever. But I do hope that you're able to be because this is a perfect transition into my next thought, which is what is that sense of achievement people get in a game? What is it that incentivizes them to continue playing? And why are a lot of people often let down by the modern MMO? This is one I have been dancing around making a video on for months. I know Knight's been looking forward to it for ages. This may not happen in one video. This could be a two-parter, possibly three-parter for good reason. Some people have very unrealistic expectations of games. 
And some people don't. And a lot of the people who do is get let down is because they have unrealistic expectations. And some get let down because the game genuinely screwed up, let them down, built their hopes up around something they didn't deliver on. But with that being said, I'm going to transition out of this video and we will continue that conversation next week. Uh, so, like I said, both of these gentlemen here are, are in virtue. I know O'Keefe right down on the bottom left uh, is also part of the virtue order. It's a it's a it's a section of our our clan or community which is promotes you know the the importance of positive, healthy, you know reciprocal relationships between people and that genuinely support each other, and and definitely you know look towards building a community that's there for ages to come. Uh, but but Keith's information will be down the below in the description as well. Check him out. Uh, Keith, if you want to go ahead and maybe pass out your information, I'm not, you know, anything that you want them to know where to find you, any of that stuff. Uh, I'm just around with virtue stream <laughs> when I can. Right on. <laughs> uh, I don't push myself. I do this for fun. I do it for enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, Twitch slash O'Keefe, O-U-K-E-E-F. Right. That it. I'll have this info down below. Rebel. I'm pushing the Discord, guys. You, right. you still haven't you still haven't hopped in. You still haven't said ah. No you, pressure. You, come, you coming or what? <laughs> so I'll be here. Be there. That's, I'm not going to say anything else. Right. Call and and can I make a quick side note? Yeah, all of the information that that we've discussed will be down below. If if you'd like to support this this video or any future videos, uh, the Patreon link will be down below as well. Um, follow me, follow, follow us on, on Twitch, on YouTube, uh, links will all be below. Same for virtue. If you're interested, if not cool, we do appreciate you investing the time watching and in participating in the discussion down below in the comments. I do encourage you to do so. Also, can I just make a quick side note here? Like what? I feel like Revel and I are both in darkness and the true light bringer is Keith. This feels very wrong to me. I'm the light bringer, the paladin, <laughs> the guardian of light and justice. And by the light, I, I smite was going to say, it's so dark in your guys' rooms. What are you guys, vampires? Turn on a light. Jeez, guys. I'm well, just saying, girl, no fangs. So I don't have an excuse. I don't think it, I don't think it's the light. I think it's his beard glowing. Right. You just think there's a light behind him. Really, it's the glowing yeah. beautifulness of the... Is that a word? Whatever. I digress. 57 minutes in. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you two uh, uh, contributing to the video and being here for the conversation. Uh, till next week, catch you on stream, guys.